Modern Horizons is here. Boxes cost twice as much as normal boxes, which means cards are going to be more expensive than they'd be if this were a normal set. That being said, there are still a host of cards in the set that are worth picking up at $5 each or below. All the cards I'm going to talk about have already had success in Modern and proved their worth. If you're at all interested in the format, these five cards are available at a bargain. You can see the entire list in the description. Hope you enjoy these finance related videos, and if you do, be sure to hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Number five on the list is Ice Fang Kodal, selling for $2 each right now on TCG Player. This is one of the cheaper cards on the list and arguably one of the most successful so far in modern. Tons of decks are including snow covered basics now because there's no reason not to, but that isn't just why Ice Fang Kodal's on the list. It's here because it's seeing play in powerful modern decks. For instance, Ice Fang Kodal is a playset in Court of Calling and collected company creature based strategies. Kiki Court loves Ice Fang Kodal as flash, cantrips, and takes something down immediately upon entry to the battlefield and combat situations. It's also a great creature to Vanna far away or even Kiki copy. Now if that was where it ended, I'd be overhyping this card a bit, but that isn't where it ends. Ice Fang Kodal has also invaded control in aggro decks. It's a full place in and teamer Scred and Modern, Scred, Nimble Mongoose, Tarmogoyf, a bunch of Snowlands, and Ice Fang Kodal. Deck is hilarious and good. And then the snow theme is being incorporated into control decks, so Sultai control lists are replacing their basics with snow basics and running Arkham's Astrolabe, Dead of Winter, and a full playset of Ice Fang Kodal alongside the powerhouses Liliana of the Veil, Snapcaster Mage, and Thoughtseize, and, and if that wasn't enough for you, it's also shown up in Wilderness Reclamation Nexus of Fate combo lists. The reason I'm telling you all this is because casting a wide net over many different strategies is a good sign for a card's future value. Ice Fang Kodal is much cheaper than its new playability would signal. Super cheap card, but a strong modern inclusion worth picking up at a couple bucks this weekend easily. At number four, we have the cheapest card in this list at legit $1, Force of Virtue. Since being previewed, Force of Virtue has dropped from around $5 to its current low point, and there couldn't be a better time to get this card. It's basically a bulk rare right now, which is crazy because it's so good and modern. What makes this card strong isn't the Anthem effect, it isn't even Flash. It's the lack of a necessary casting cost. The reason why that makes it so strong is because of the decks it's included in. Strategies that need to use all their mana as efficiently as possible. The first is Soul Sisters. A deck that's always been teetering on tier 2 and sometimes breaks through at events, Soul Sisters loves Force of Virtue in the main deck. While the strategy loves gaining life, the primary purpose of the deck is to win relatively quickly. Force of Virtue synergizes strongly with Spectral Procession, pumping all those spirits. It synergizes with Sarah Ascendant, granting additional power to lifelink from your opponent, and it turns all the 1-1 creatures in the deck into 2-2s dodging tremor-like abilities. With enough Force of Virtue on the battlefield, these little creatures can even dodge commonly used 2 and 3 damage board wipes. What you're looking to do here is flood the board like you normally would, then when your opponent thinks they have another two or three turns because you only have one ones, you drop Force of Virtue down at instant speed without tapping a single land, and turn your four or five one ones into two twos, potentially ending the game right there. Force of Virtue has also found a way into some variants of Eldrazi and Taxes. This I did not expect, but after speaking to some pros about it, Force of Virtue is a real ad here. Eldrazi and Taxes tends to use most of its mana every single turn. Whether that's casting creatures, holding up mana for Path to Exile, or Eldrazi Displacer, the deck needs most of its mana all the time. Force of Virtue, like in Soul Sisters, fits perfectly into a deck that runs low to the ground with only 20 lands, a 3 mana cost card getting onto the battlefield for free, and this strategy is huge. It adds a more aggressive feel to the deck and gives real legs in combat to cards like Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, Leon and Arbiter, and even Thraben and Spectre. Soul Sisters and Eldrazi and Taxes are not the same deck and do not play similarly at all, but it's clear that Force of Virtue is a solid inclusion in any white creature-based deck in modern, and again, it's $1. It isn't going to be $20 next year or anything, but wow, is it a bargain buy right now. Moving right along to number three, we have Unsettled Mariner. I think a lot of players expected this card to be somewhat decent and modern, but it's definitely making more of a splash than I thought it would. At $4.50 each right now, the Mariner easily qualifies for this list. What makes this card so special is just how widely played it is already and the quality of decks it's included in. Let me explain. The first deck to adopt Unsettled Mariner was Spirits, a real tier one deck in modern. And players aren't shy about its inclusion. It's a playset in these banned spirit decks. Doing a fair impression of Kira, Great Glass Spinner, Unsettled Mariner 
Mariner punishes mana curves with its taxing trigger. Thanks to the Mariner dropping early in the game, targeted removal on Supreme Phantom and Spell Queller become even more difficult to pull off, and it was already pretty annoying thanks to Drogskull Captain. Mariner adds four more spirits to the deck thanks to Changeling. It's in the two primary colors of the strategy, fits into the two mana cost slot without competing with too many other spirits, and it pushes your opponents off balance, messing with their tempo. A tribal deck like Spirits thrives on that. Unsettled Mariner is likely going to be in Spirits until the deck no longer exists. Simply put, it's just one of the best Spirits in Modern right now. Being a staple in Spirits is already enough to give a card value, but the fact that Unsettled Mariner is also seeing play in humans decks, now we're talking, thanks to being a changeling, the Mariner is also a human, coming down early or through Aether Vial to provide protection and tax against spot removal. Like in Spirits, humans need to keep their creatures alive to win, Meddling Mage, Manus Rider, Thalia's Lieutenant, you don't want to lose these creatures too early and at the very least, Mariner will usually absorb an expensive removal spell before any of your more important creatures can. Worst case scenario, it's a human, so it synergizes with Champion of the Parish and Thalia's Lieutenant, could do way worse for some tempo gaining removal protection. Like I said before, this set is more expensive than a normal set, so you should expect cards to be relatively more expensive on average. This isn't even $5 yet, and given how popular it is in Modern right now, I don't see it going much lower. As more players flood into the format and build new decks, the Mariner is going to slot in nicely to many of them. Great price this weekend, pick them up if you need them. Number two is Goblin Engineer. Feels like this card is just asking to explode. The fair version of Goblin Welder is $4.85 right now, and I consider that a great price, bordering on a steal. Goblin Engineer is one of those cards that either booms when a strategy breaks it in modern, or does nothing when nothing breaks it. There's a reason why foil copies are $20 already, though. Players are preparing for this to skyrocket. Anyways, we're talking about Goblin Engineer because it's had some promising results in new modern. Enough success to warrant discussion for sure. It's one thing to think a card is going to be good, and another to actually see it succeed. Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry love this card. Alongside Urza, Goblin Engineer has found a home in an interesting War of Invention, Time Sieve, Thopter Foundry deck. Thanks to its tutor trigger, the Engineer is valuable as heck here, grabbing any of the artifacts you need in the deck, but it goes one step further. Time Sieve, Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meek, these all cost two mana. Goblin Engineer returns an artifact to the battlefield with converted mana cost three or less. It's like this card was designed for a deck like this one. Sacrificing and recurring the Sieve, Terrarian, Foundry, and Sword has never been this easy and modern. Legit never. Goblin Engineer gives this deck some much needed legs and if it does take off, the Engineer will be a huge part of its success. Plus, the card is going to be great in Commander. It's more limited than Goblin Welder, but the Ready Scrap, Savant, Felden of the Third Path, and Brea Ethereum Shaper are absolutely going to want a card like this. Don't sleep too long on it. It shouldn't bottom out below where it's at right now. The best card to buy from Modern Horizons right now for Modern at exactly $5 is Giver of Runes. This card is straight insanity. I'm sure this doesn't surprise a lot of you, but the price should surprise you considering its playability so far. In case you haven't seen, basically every single deck in Modern that's running a mass of creatures and white mana is including Giver of Runes. It's incredibly impressive the range of decks Giver of Runes has managed to penetrate. From human decks, despite the fact that it isn't a human, to death and taxes builds because it can protect Thalia, Leon and Arbiter, and Restoration Angel, but then in the Eldrazi version, it can also protect Eldrazi Displacer and Thought Not Seer. It's in Devoted Company decks as it protects the wind conditions, and even in Spirits because, again, white creature that can protect any creature for a simple tap. Giver of Runes is a nod to Mother of Runes, but this card is going to be just as infamous, mark my words. $5 a piece might seem like a lot to you, but please don't forget. Packs of the set are expensive. Boxes of the set are expensive. Twice as expensive as a normal set. Even when tons of boxes are open this weekend, Giver of Runes will never be a $1 rare. It just isn't going to happen. It's too versatile and powerful to ever fall to balk level. And even if by some miracle it didn't see play in Modern, Commander is chock full of decks that want this card. Kalia, Gaddic Teague, anything with Ravos or Timna, eight and a half tails and plenty more. Mother of Runes has always had value and the giver will as well. Please don't sit back on this card for too long when you combine a universally strong ability in a synergistic color with a cheap cost, beautiful artwork by a super popular artist, and inclusion in an expensive set. You have the makings of an expensive card. Giver of Runes is the best new modern staple in the set under $5 right now, guaranteed. There are plenty of great cards in Modern Horizons, and I'm sure that they will all come down in price when the set's open this weekend by the truckload, but these five? They're already underpriced. The floor is much closer than the ceiling. Most players haven't read into these results yet, but once they do, they'll see everything we've just spoken about. These are great cards, and they're cheap, so if you're interested in getting any of them, or just want to see the list again, you can click the first link in the description. If these finance videos are helpful to you and you want to see more of them, I'm always looking for feedback and suggestions, so please leave them below and we'll talk about it, and as always, Always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.